Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel, History Books. I'm Camilla, and today, God, it's been forever since I filmed a video, actually. I'm pretty sure over a month, but I'm back, and I thought I would go through the books that are on my Nedgelly shelf, because one of my goals this year is to clear my shelf, which, I mean, it's always a goal to get to, like, you know, zero, or, like, to get to up-to-date books, you know, books that haven't come out yet. And every time I get close, I go in and I order, you know, request loads of books and I end up, you know, with plenty to read and then I have projects and readathons and everything and I don't quite make it. So I thought, you know, in terms of accountability, I would tell you which books are on my TBR and they're all books I'm kind of excited to read, but some of them I've had them for so long that it's now embarrassing and they're kind of at the bottom of my palette because I'm so late anyway. May as well wait another year but you know let's let's dive in and we'll, we'll see what it looks like so my net galley shelf has 26 books still pending and five books that i've said that i would not give feedback on and four of those books are actually books that i've had issues with the file so i was never able to either open them or they were um retired no what's the word archived <laughs> before i was able to go and download them so for those books, one of them is a book that I've DNF'd, but I've since found an audiobook, so I might give it a chance on audio because maybe, you know, easier way to just for a book to go in. We'll see. But on the actual shelf, there's 26 books, and some of them are quite a few years old, so a little bit embarrassing, and they kind of fall by the wayside because I'm always trying to kind of keep up with the books that I just got and I'm really excited about, but I still need to read all of these books. The first one is Le Sourire Contagieux des Croissants au Beurre by Camille Andrea. The translation would be The Contagious Smile of Buttery Croissant. And this is a book because Nedgalli has a French site and I'd requested quite a few books a couple of years ago because I wanted to up my French reading <laughs> and I don't have access to a lot of French books um, here unless my mom's shipping them to me, which she does. But I yeah, requested a couple. I started reading this one it was all right, but I kind of lost interest, so I just ignored it. I definitely want to finish reading it and review it, so I need to go back to it at some point. But this came out in 2021, so it's been a little bit of fun. <laughs> the next one is An Unusual Grief by Yewande Omotoso. And this sounds like a really beautiful portrayal of grief, as the title says. I'm kind of excited about this one, but again, because I've had it for so long, it just keeps being like, well... I guess if it's waited for two years, it can wait another six months or a year. The next book is a book I'm actually really excited about. It's called Disorientation by Ellen Chie Chu. And this came out in March 2022, so I'm working a bit closer now. <laughs> and um, this is a debut novel about a PhD student who, after four years, has kind of hit a wall in her research. And I, th I believe that she starts inventing information about the poet that she's researching for her thesis and obviously i've just started a phd so it kind of was very intriguing to me to kind of see more of that process although technically i guess this is sort of cheating but i was really into like this world so yeah i'm really excited i think that this is a book that would be really good on audio but i just can't find the audiobook uh, obviously it's come out a year ago now so a lot of these books sometimes it's easy for me to find the audiobook because <laughs> it's been so long but anyway the next one is a transgender issue by Sean Fay. This also came out in oh, this one came out in twenty twenty one. I think I actually heard about it in August twenty twenty one at the Edinburgh Book Festival, and I, I saw Sean Fay talk, and I was really interested by this book, and so I ordered it. I started it. I think I read like almost half, and then for some reason it just fell by the wayside, and I don't really know why. But it's a book I definitely want to go back to. I found a copy, like a paper copy at my library and I might actually get the book. I think it'll help me read physically through the book than on the ebook on the tablet. So yeah, I'm actually very excited by that and I definitely need to finish reading it. So hopefully I will manage that this year. Next we're back in 2022, March 2022 again. This is Chilean Poet by Alejandro Zambra who is a Chilean author and this I like a lot of his books are really interesting because they clearly are highly almost like not autofiction but they're clearly highly inspired by his own life and i read one of his a couple i think it was 
ways to go home a couple of years ago and I really enjoyed that so I'm interested in reading a bit more and reading more Chilean authors as you know in general so I'm keen to go back to this one and it says Gonzalo is a frustrated would-be poet in a city full of poets and it's so funny because Chilean always talk about that like everyone's a poet <laughs> nine years after their bewildering breakup Gonzalo reunites with his teen sweetheart Carla who is now too surprised the mother of a young son Vicente Soon they form a happy sort of family, a step family, though no such word exists in their language. In time, fate and ambition pulls the lovers apart, but when it comes to love and poetry, what will the Gonzalo's legacy to his not quite stepson be? Zambra chronicles with tenderness and insight the everyday moments that constitute family life in this bold, brilliant new novel. So very exciting. This is actually a fun video to make because I feel like it's getting me really excited about a lot of these books. Next we have what I believe is a Norwegian book. It's called Grown Ups by Marie Aubert. It says it's an exhilaratingly funny and unexpectedly devastating novel. For anyone who has ever felt the fear of being overtaken by a sibling who feels almost but not quite grown up. It's a short book that I've started and it's quite poignant in the way that it discusses, I guess it's a lot of like potentially like millennial women feel um, about, you know, time moving so fast. Uh, especially yeah, through the COVID era and stuff like that. Loads of my friends have had babies and obviously I'm in my early 30s and I don't have children and it's just very interesting to get that uh, perspective. The next one is another novel about sort of family dynamic. I've also started it and I'm hoping to actually finish it in June. It's called At the Table by Claire Powell. This also came out in March 2022. We follow uh, some siblings that they think they have like almost like the perfect parents in terms of like their uh, chemistry you know like their bond but they announce that they're separated and it kind of crushes their expectations of um commitment and stuff like that and i think most of the scenes are over dinner which is why it's called at the table and i think it's really interesting because i feel like for novelists the dinner scenes can be quite difficult to write or like you know there's so much talking back and forth and stuff like that so and, uh, one that i'm currently really enjoying actually at the moment but we'll see how um how it finishes then we have life ceremony by sayaka murata this came out in july 2022 i have actually read more than half of this book there it's a series of short stories and they're weird <laughs> so weird and it's exactly what you should expect from murata um but sometimes i read one and i'm like okay i need to take some time away from this st story in which they eat people after they die <laughs> or whatever a uh, bizarre thing is you know ex explored in that particular short story but i'm enjoying it i'm hoping also to finish it over the summer um you know by continuing these short stories but yeah very weird but very good then we have under the same stars by alexandra hemmingsley this came out also in july 2022 i requested this book because i love hemmingsley's writing although i've never read one of her novels i've read two of her non-fiction books one of which is running like a girl which i absolutely love it's one of my favorite non-fiction I love running so I just yeah that book really um struck a chord with me and it actually was recommended by multiple people separately to me so it could be those people knew exactly what I needed <laughs> but this is uh one of her novels and I thought I would order it it says it's a beautiful and moving tale of sisterhood in the wilderness so it says Clara Seymour is trying to find her feet in London living away from home for the first time brought up by her domineering mother treasuring time any time with her adoring father. Clara's world is brought to a standstill when her father suddenly dies. Then a mystery comes to light in a letter from him. I'm sure you are aware that before I met your mother, I had a previous marriage, but we have never discussed is that we had a daughter. So that's one that I found an audiobook for and I started listening to it. And it's, I'm not loving the writing style at the moment at the beginning, but we've just experienced the death of her father in the first few chapters. So I think hopefully it develops from there. But it's also one that I'm hoping to read in the next kind of one month or two to finish it. Then we have a non-fiction book based in Scotland. It's called The Ponies at the Edge of the World by Catherine Munro. Munro is actually, I believe, a PhD student who moved up to Shetland or like a remote island in Shetland to study the ponies who live up there. And I, I'm very excited by non-fiction that is based in Scotland, obviously. And again, it's one that it has struck a little bit of a chord with the PhD element. But also I love nature writing in Scotland. 
and it's one that I look forward to reading. Again, I found a copy, a physical copy of this one at my local library, so I think I might get a copy to read. Then we have A Darkly Spellbinding Tale of Female Empowerment with Waking the Witch by Rachel Burge. And I just love anything with witches. You know, I'm a sucker for that. I think that's why I requested it. Um, it says, Ivy has spent years looking for her birth mother, but when she finally finds her on Bardsey Island, she is shocked by what greets her. According to folklore, the cormorants that fly over the remote Welsh Isle are the terrifying witches of Arcturian legend, and they are searching for ivy. I just love the idea of it. I kind of got left to the wayside a little bit again because I was just like, oh, I could do with reading something else. And sometimes I'm not feeling fully in the kind of fantasy element, but I, again, I'm very excited to buy this blurb again to revisit. So yeah, I'll definitely be getting to this one. Then we have another sort of fantasy. It's Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. And I've tried, this is an audiobook um, arc, and I've tried so many times to listen to it. And it's, it's narrated by the amazingly talented Nicola Kaufman. I think she's doing a fabulous job with all the different narrations, different accents. But I've just struggled to connect with this book. Like I've tried to start it multiple times. And I think it's because there's so many characters I struggle to get into it but I definitely want to finish it I definitely want to go back to it and kind of focus on it <laughs> at some point uh, again I think it's one for the summer that I definitely want to you know review and get it off my list but I've only heard good things about it so I will get it back to it soon next we have Room and Board by Miriam Parker this is an American novel in which a woman who's I think a little bit downtrodden um, goes back to her alma mater, like her school, which is an all-girls school, to become a bit like a, a house mom, like, you know, she, they're in the residence uh, quarter, so she's going to go and live there, and I guess unwillingly revisit some of the memories of her time there. And I just love the idea. I went to all-girls school, so I'm always, again, really interested by books that are based in all-girls schools. But I, yeah, I, I think this one is very much like commercial... Uh, women's fiction and it's nice but sometimes I'm not kind of quite in the mood but I will definitely go back to it. Then we have a book about book so it's called Bookish People by Susan Cole. This is a book again I found an audiobook and I've tried to start it multiple times and again I'm not quite connecting with the main character but I think it's one that I will like when I actually focus on it. It is a perfect storm of comedic proportions that erupts in a DC bookstore over the course of one soggy summer week. But yeah, we follow the bookstore owner, and I don't know when this is sort of based, but it seems to be after the death of her husband, and there is political unrest kind of around and um, protests and stuff like that. The beginning was quite serious, so I'm quite surprised to see here that it's actually comedic. And the cover feels quite light as well. So I think the beginning starts with a lot of anxiety, which when I have anxiety, it doesn't make me feel good to read about anxiety. So I think that's why I've struggled to get into it. But I think it's one I will definitely get to again. Then we have two nonfiction again. The first one is Strong Female Character by Hannah Flint. And the second is Blurb Your Enthusiasm by Louise Wilder. So Blurb Your Enthusiasm um, is about book blurbs. And Wilder is actually a blurb writer by profession. So she kind of goes through, I cited this one, it's very good. But it can get a bit tedious because it's quite kind of sometimes a bit technical but I love the stories of you know how to write a good blurb or like the different eras and themes and um, styles and fashions of blurbs and how they've evolved so that's really a good one especially if you enjoy reading books that are potentially like based in the bookish world so I look forward to going back to that and yeah up to now I'm really really enjoying it. Strong female character is actually non-fiction about film, but also about memoirs or how films and kind of um, cinematic characters have helped shape Flint's kind of understanding of herself as a person and everything. And, you know, I always love the whole strong female character theme. So that's why I requested it. And yeah, I think it's going to be great. I haven't started it yet. Now we're finally at the last 10 books, which are all books I've requested. <laughs> in January I believe when I was like one of my goals this year is to clear my shelf let me order and request 10 books so all these books have come out early 2023 or about to come out in the summer um so yeah the first one is history keeps me awake at night by Christy Edwall this came in out in February 2023 this is about a, a journalist who is reading about all these stories I started reading it I really enjoyed it I think it's quite short 
So I think when I get to it properly, I will finish it quite quickly. I'm enjoying it up now. I'm really enjoying the voice. Then we have Burnham Wood by Eleanor Catton. I don't think I have to introduce this one. A lot of people have talked about it because obviously Catton has previously uh, been nominated for the Women's Prize and won with the Luminaries. And I pre I requested it because I thought I was going to get uh, long listed for the Women's Prize this year, but I didn't. So I kind of just stopped reading it. <laughs> when it didn't because I've been obviously obsessively reading the list for this year but I look forward to going back to it because I'm actually really enjoying it and I think it's not as long as I thought it would be then we have Dazzling by Chikodili Emelumadu um, and this is an audiobook arc that I have uh, which is based in a bit like Nigerian magical realism which is really interesting but sometimes really difficult to in the audiobook form to understand what's going on because it goes between timelines it goes between different narrators so i've struggled to start it a couple of times but i'm about halfway through now and i hopefully will finish it in the next few weeks now we have one that's come out this month in may 2023 it is a small worlds by caleb azuma nelson i requested that one because i love nelson's debut novel last year open water um you can go and check out my review of that because i was just gushing about it <laughs> and i think it was my favorite book of the year last year so I had to request his new book. Obviously, I haven't managed to read it ahead of, you know, it coming out, but I'm really, really excited for it. And I will hopefully dive into it this summer. Another book that I was so excited about and I didn't get time to finish, although I did start it, was The Secrets of Hardwood Hall by Katie Lumsden, obviously the booktuber of books and things. And um, yeah, I'm very excited. I actually, she was so kind to invite me to her book launch. Uh, in London. I just couldn't quite make it down, you know, um, on a Thursday from Scotland. But yeah, looking forward to finishing it, um, hopefully very soon, and maybe to meet her this summer. Next, we have another audio arc, which is The Book of Eve by Meg Clotier. It's described as a beguiling historical feminist tale inspired by an undeciphered Voynich manuscript, whatever that means. But I was really excited about this because of like the feminist theme, and um, it says here, the bunny meets the handmaid's tale. Sold, right? It says, Beatrice is a convent librarian. For years, she has shunned the company of her sisters, finding solace only with her manuscripts. Then one carnival night, two women bleeding and stricken are abandoned outside the convent's walls. Moments from death, one of them presses something into Beatrice, Beatrice's hands. A bewitching book whose pages have a dangerous life of their own. How exciting does that sound? Oh, it's reminding me how exciting it sounds because I started listening to this book and it's really confusing. It's very poetic and lyrical at the beginning. So I'm really confused by that because it sounds like it's a quite straightforward novel. I find it difficult sometimes when it's so poetic to have it on audio because I feel like I should be reading it. But I'll definitely pursue this because, you know, the general aspect of it, of the manuscript and of this convent and the ladies who live there uh, just sounds so cool. So, yeah, I look forward to kind of diving back into this one. Next is a book that has come out just really recently, uh, a couple of days ago. It's just called Mother Sea by Lauren Wilson. In an island community facing extinction, can hope rise stronger than grief? Sisi de Matilde lives on a remote island in the Indian Ocean. With the seas rising, the birth rate plummeting, and her community under threat, she works as a scientist reporting on the rapidly changing local climate conditions to help protect her island home. But her life is thrown into turmoil when she finds herself newly widowed and unexpectedly pregnant. When a group of outsiders arrive and try to persuade her community to abandon the island, Sissy is caught between the sacred all the ways of her ancestors and the possibilities offered by the outside world. As tensions rise and the islanders turn on one another, Sissy must fight to save her home, her people, and her unborn child. That sold me completely, and I just love the cover. I think it's so beautiful. So yeah, I'm very excited for this one. Then we have another nonfiction. It's called Letters to a Writer of Color, and this is a series of essays edited by Deepa Anapara and Tamor Somro. And it's a very interesting um, collection. I've read the first essay only about being an author of color, about what is expected sometimes of you using your trauma or your experience and also the different cr creative inspiration that these authors have used and yeah i'm very very excited to continue reading more of these essays then we have two books that haven't come out yet Ooh. <laughs> the first one is the bookbinder of jericho by pip williams this is coming out in july of this year i 
requested this one because I loved Pippa Lim's first novel, The Dictionary of Lost Words. Uh, it was one of my favorite books, I believe in 2021. Um, so yeah, I had to just request this one. I literally don't know anything about it, but I'm in and it seems to be about books. So yeah, I'm really excited for it. And finally, the last book, which I literally, I think, requested like two weeks ago, is The Twilight Garden by Sarah Nisha Adams. Again, another one that I saw the name of the author and I was like, yes, I will do this, please. Uh, Sarah Nisha Adams wrote The Reading List, which I think I read, I think it was last year, maybe been the year before, but I absolutely loved it. That was her debut novel about um, a teenager and an older widow. Um, connecting over a reading list, a list of books, and I absolutely loved it. So I was just like, yeah, I'm keen to read whatever she has, you know, going on next. And it says, in a small pocket of London between the houses of number 77 and number 78, Eastbourne Road lies a neglected community garden. Once a sanctuary for people when they needed it most, the garden gate is now firmly closed. And that's exactly how Winston at number 79 likes it. Anything to avoid his irritating new next-door neighbor. But when a mystery parcel drops on Winston doormat, a curious bundle of photographs of a community garden, his garden, bursting with life years ago, a seed of an idea is planted. So yeah, I'm very, very excited. It sounds like it's going to have similar theme of bringing people together, but this time potentially to gardening rather than books. But yeah, I'm very keen to read it. So these were the 26 books. Oh, God. I feel embarrassed that there's 26 books and literally 24 of them have already come out. Yeah, but I have plans to read all of them. Let's be honest, it's unlikely I'm going to read 26 books in the next six months. Obviously, it, just generally, I think that will have gone through my book goal of the year. But also, this is only like these ebooks, so we'll see. But it's still like, it was really nice to go back through and just, you know, look about all of them because I feel like it's made me excited again about these books I was excited about when I requested them. So yeah, I'll definitely dive back into a few of them in the next few weeks and hopefully I'll be able to wrap some of them up and review them soon. So tell me what your net galley shelf looks like if you're on that galley and you know what's the book that you're most excited about if it hasn't come out yet, that's cool. And as always, thank you so much for watching and hey see you back. Bye!